Macroeconomic Update, July 2020 In the month of July 2020, Indian equities ended with strong gains, driven by optimism around pickup in economic activity from the bottom seen in April 2020. Positive news on vaccine developments, better than expected Q1 results, etc. This was partly offset by the risk of a second wave of COVID-19 infection, escalation of tension between US and China, etc. In the fixed income markets, while 10-year GSEC yield was largely range-bound, the credit environment improved significantly with spreads of corporate bonds easing on back of improvement in sentiments and impact of measures taken by RBI. The spread of COVID-19 continued to remain a concern with the number of infected cases globally rising to approximately 17.75 million from 10.6 million on 30th June 2020. The total infected cases in India reached approximately 1.7 million as on 31st July 2020, up from approximately 0.6 million cases as on 30th June 2020. Though the number of positive cases continue to rise, the proportion of positive cases was relatively low considering the large population. India also has a low fatality rate compared to many other countries. Further, the recovery rate in India is relatively strong and active cases rose to only 0.56 million from 0.22 million a month ago. As the economy is reopening and restrictions are relaxed, the Indian economy is witnessing signs of pickup in economic activity. Activity indicators like power demand, goods transported by railway, unemployment rate, etc. are showing improvement month on month and the pace of contraction has significantly reduced since April 2020. However, some consumption indicators like sale of cars, two-wheelers, diesel, credit growth, etc. continue to remain weak, although better than last month. While the impact of lockdown will be felt most in H1-FY21, we believe that H2-FY21 is likely to be significantly better provided the spread of COVID-19 is contained to a large extent. India's trade deficit for June 2020 turned positive, a first after 18 years due to month-on-month -month improvement in non-oil, non-gold exports, while non-oil, non-gold imports contracted. The details of each item of exports and imports are not published yet, and hence it is difficult to assess which segment led to the improvement. From the available information, it is evident that growth in export of engineering and electronic goods was healthy while imports of ores were lower than last month. The weakness in non-oil, non-gold imports also indicates that domestic demand remains muted. Net oil imports rose due to rise in oil prices, while net gold imports was relatively stable, supported by growth in exports of gems and jewellery. Trade deficit is expected to improve in FY21 due to low crude oil prices, weak gold volumes and likely fall in non-oil, non-gold imports. This is likely to be partially offset by weaker exports. This bodes well for current account and balance of payment for FY21. Significant shortfall in tax revenues, both direct and indirect taxes, resulted in the centre's fiscal deficit widening to 83% of budgeted estimates in first quarter of FY21, compared to 61% last year. Transfers to states remained high despite shortfall in revenues as the centre continues to transfer the amount based on budgeted estimates rather than actual revenue collections. Capital expenditure grew at a healthy pace, driven by higher spending on roads, lower spending last year due to general elections, and loans to public institutions for food grains. Revenue expenditure growth was supported by higher spending on Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme and transfer of high compensation cess to states. 
Fiscal deficit in FY21 is likely to be significantly higher than budgeted estimates on back of contraction in revenues because of lockdown, weakness in economic activity, and impact of announced fiscal stimulus. Inflation softened a tad in June 2020, driven by fall in food prices, especially fruits and vegetables. However, inflation of other constituents of food index, like pulses, meat, edible oil, etc., remained at an elevated level. Further, driven by rise in duties on petrol and diesel, the fuel inflation rose. Core CPI also rose, mainly driven by higher gold prices. While inflation in the near term can remain at an elevated level due to supply-side disruptions, it is likely to moderate in H2FY21 on account of base effect, weak aggregate demand, and normalization of supply. Commodity prices ended the month higher on back of optimism around normalization in economic activity, especially in the US and China. Gold prices continue to rise driven by high liquidity, rising cases of COVID-19 globally, and escalation of tensions between US and China. The Indian economy continued to recover in July 2020 post the shock of pandemic and subsequent lockdown in April 2020 and May 2020. However, recovery is still in its nascent stage and its sustainability over the next few months needs to be closely monitored. While on a full-year basis, India's GDP in FY21 is likely to contract, we believe that the worst is largely behind us and economic activity should improve sequentially. Fiscal and monetary measures announced should also support this revival. Going forward, FY22 is likely to witness a strong rebound in growth driven by low base, pent-up demand and full year of normal activity. However, growth rate in FY21 and FY22 are aberration and it should normalize by FY23 in our opinion. Further, low dependence on exports and sharp fall in oil prices puts India in a better position compared to the emerging markets in the near term. This is because India is a large net importer of oil and low prices helps in improving its current account. Further, weakness in global trade has relatively lower impact given India's limited dependence on merchandise trade, especially discretionary items. In addition to aforesaid, over medium to long term, this episode is likely to nudge global MNCs to consider diversifying their manufacturing operations from China to reduce over-dependence on a single country. This bodes well for India as it can attract global manufacturing given its skilled population, relatively low wages, a large domestic market and concessionary tax rate offered. This will also be supported by sustained efforts by governments to encourage manufacturing in India, like production-linked incentive scheme, improving ease of doing business, etc. For more on this, please refer a mid-year update on the Indian economy and markets, published in June 2020 and available on our website www.hdfcfund.com. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.